Today we're going to talk about germination testing. I haven't done that much germination testing over time, but this year I decided that I needed to do a little bit more. I was sharing more seeds that I had grown myself, and I wanted to make sure that what I was sharing would germinate. And so I ran tests on a number of different seeds that I intended to share. Here's the thing, I hadn't done this much before, so my strategy was imperfect. And I do a lot of experimenting with things, and sometimes I just like to try something and see how it goes, and then learn from that experience. And I learned quite a bit from this experience. So I'm going to share what I learned about seed germination testing. The reason that you want to test germination is to find out the percentage of seeds that are likely to actually turn into plants, that are likely to germinate once you plant them. And so doing a test beforehand can give you a sense of that so that when you plant them, you're not planting too few seeds or too many seeds. And if you're starting them in your basement like I am, you have a limited amount of space. So you want to make sure that you are maximizing your space. So knowing what is likely to germinate can be very helpful in terms of planting. It's also helpful if you're sharing your seeds because you, like I said before, you don't want to share seeds with other people if you don't think that they're going to germinate. Or if only a small percentage of them are going to germinate, you might want to tell people that in advance. That's what I tell people with the sea kale seeds that I share. I might share 20 seeds, but I would expect that only four or five of those will actually germinate. And that's held true for me uh, over some time. And there, there are some strategies I haven't yet tried with that, and I might work on that a little bit more in the future. But, uh, but anyway, there are, there are other plants that I would expect to do well in germination, but they didn't do so well, and I learned something about them here too, so I'll, I'll go into that in a minute. <clears throat> so I did a bunch of these germination tests with a bunch of different seeds, and I got great results from some seeds, lackluster results from other seeds. Uh, I now have kind of the beginnings of data collection on these seeds, and so I now understand which seeds might be easier or harder to germinate. I've also improved my methods by asking my community uh, of, of growers what strategies they use. And so I've learned from that. And, and I'm going to, you know, a lot of the ideas were great. I didn't use all of the ideas, but I, I did choose certain ideas, and I'm going to tell you what those were and, uh, and kind of how they seem to have improved my, uh, my overall germination setup. So my first try, what I did first, and this is without asking really that much advice, I took paper towels and I got them slightly damp, flattened them out in Ziploc bags, and added 10 or 20 seeds, depending on the type of plant, to each of those um, dampened paper towels. Closed up the Ziploc bag, put them away, and well, put them on a shelf, and waited for about seven days to see what the results were. My squash results were fantastic, but I've talked about the other, you know, the other things too that you know maybe weren't quite as good. Uh, but one of, one of the things that turned out to be a drawback was the seeds that I had saved myself, I'd, I had cleaned them under water, you know, I would washed them, uh, but I hadn't cleaned them in any kind of uh, sterile way. I didn't make them sterile in any way. And uh, it turns out this can be important with seeds that you are saving for yourself. I'd never really thought about this because I had just planted the seeds into you know, starter cells uh, in the spring and, and hadn't worried whether or not they would mold. But it's possible that by molding, some of them might not have germinated when, you know, with a little bit of careful preparation, they might have. So there, there are several different ways of cleaning 
seeds uh, for storage and for germination. Some people will do a hot water treatment and you need to do research for your particular seed to figure out what's the right temperature, how much time, and you know the, the various steps for that. And that's not the solution that I use, but that is a solution that some people use. I think there's a, something from LSU, the PDF out there that, uh, that describes some of this, and maybe I'll be able to put a link to that in the description below here. Another way is by using uh, bleach. And it's a fairly strong bleach solution that is suggested and you, you will find different strengths recommended by different uh, resources. And so the strength that I chose to use, because I did decide to use this method, I decided to use a 10% bleach solution, which means for every one part of bleach, you use nine parts of water. So I did this uh, for the number of seeds that I was using. I really only did a tablespoon of bleach to nine tablespoons of water, soaked the seeds in that solution because there were only you know, a very small number of seeds that I was sterilizing this way. And then you have to rinse them uh, and you really want to let them sit in water for, you know, I've seen recommended like 10 minutes or so to let them, the bleach kind of dissipate. Bleach is kind of a, a it adheres to things pretty easily. If you've ever gotten bleach in your hands and tried to wash them off, they kind of feel slimy for a while, and that's what happens to your seeds. So you want to make sure that you soak that bleach off of your seeds, which I did my best to do. The other thing that I did was, instead of using paper towels, I switched to using strips of fabric. And I'll show you, we actually had some old <laughs> Mr. Clean wipes under the sink. And, and so you can see these, these things. And that seemed to be about the same you know, thickness as a paper towel, but I could boil these. They probably come out of the package sterile, but I, I wanted to make sure that they didn't have any, any kind of solution on them that would be a problem for germinating seeds on. So I washed them carefully and boiled them, let them uh, cool off in the, uh, and dry off actually in the oven uh, at just sort of a, a warm temperature in the oven, let them dry, and then added uh, filtered water to each of the, the bags that I was, I was going to then, uh, well, I added the filtered water <laughs> to, to the Mr. Clean one and put it into the bag, placed the seeds in a couple of rows on this, closed it up, and I have been letting these sit and germinate. So this one needs to go a couple more days before it gets to the same amount of time that I let the others germinate. So I can kind of compare the germination rate of this method with the other method. But what I can tell you already is <clears throat> there's almost no mold on these so that now I know that the mold is not interfering with the germination. I don't even know if that's possible, but I assume that it is. And I've also read that uh, you can have diseases and things like that that, that uh, are uh, uh, that are introduced to your soil by using seeds that have not been treated before they are planted. Anyway, uh, take that for what it's worth. But uh, I feel like I've had good results with this bleaching method in terms of not having a bag of moldy stuff at the end where I just didn't know why they, uh, why they germinated, why they didn't germinate. I'm still leaving it up in the air whether I will, for my own seeds, use this method before I plant them and start them in soil. I, I would like to hear more from the community, though, about what has worked for them. I know some people use hydrogen peroxide. Some people 
uh, use other things that they mix in with the water when they like vinegar when they're germinating the problem is these things change the ph of the uh, of the seed starting uh, fabric if you will and it could very well affect the germination rate one way or another and so you don't necessarily want to introduce something that's going to change the germination like if something is too acidic it might be good for tomatoes theoretically it might be very bad for cabbage uh, and you know i'm just throwing that out there i don't know that that's true but it's been i've been told that that was the case uh, so so that's why I didn't choose that method. I'm not saying that method is bad of you know, adding something that, that actually acts as an active sterilizer. I'm just saying that I've been advised against it and I decided to take that advice, even though it has worked for other people. The other thing that I didn't take, the advice I didn't take, but I would like to take, I just haven't figured out the right way to do it, is instead of using disposable plastic bags, which I just don't really like doing, I would prefer to use something that uh, can be re washed and reused. Now I can wash and reuse these plastic bags, which I'll probably try to do, as long as they're not moldy, it's probably all right. Uh, I could uh, wash them out with a little bit of bleach perhaps, or, uh, or in some other way to get them clean enough to start another batch of seeds in these same, in these same, um, uh, plastic bags, or I could use them for something else. So that's, uh, you know, I can, I can reuse them, but I really like to find or to create uh, maybe a seed starting uh, or a seed germination testing tray that I could cover and, and put out these strips that I'm testing things on and, and it would keep the moisture in also, the other thing I didn't experiment with, which I'm going to experiment more with, is temperature. And so I have uh, created a uh, sort of a, the equivalent of a seed mat, which I'll talk about in a different uh, video, but this keeps the temperature consistent uh, and warmer than my house temperature at this time of year, which in the, it, at night, our temperature in the house can drop down to 50 degrees. We try not to overheat the house just for energy saving purposes. And, and then in the daytime, it can go up to you know, 68 degrees or sometimes even warmer depending on the day. And these fluctuations in temperature probably aren't very good for me to use in terms of testing my germination. If I have a consistent temperature, it gives me a more consistent result. So that's something that I will experiment with and I haven't started experimenting with, but I think that that's a good idea to, uh, to try and do. So, so those, are, those are my results. That is what I'm doing now, uh, but I would love to hear your feedback. I'd love to see your comments below. Really appreciate you, you subscribing to this channel and, uh, and keeping me up to date on what you're doing because I'm very interested in hearing what other people are doing because that's how I learn. I learn by experimenting and I learn by hearing from you. So please do, please keep in touch. Uh, and I, I really love the give and take. So I look forward to hearing from you. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, hope you have a great day.